Hi, I'm Jennifer Ackerman Haywood from CraftSanity.com and I am here to show you guys a little tutorial on how to warp and weave on the Craft Sanity bracelet and mini tapestry looms. Uh, these looms are sold together as a package. You also can order them separately. Uh, you can make bracelets on both. Uh, this one, the smaller one, is the one that I use primarily for bracelets and I like to do tapestry work on this one. But again, you can do both on both of these looms. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of go over the process here for warping these looms. So when you get them, obviously it just looks like this. I'm getting questions from people about what kind of warp to use, what you can use to warp your loom. Uh, I'm, I use rug warp um, quite frequently. I get this from a weaving uh, supply company. Uh, you can get it any place that sells weaving supplies. You can, you can find this. You also can find it online if you do a search for rug warp. The easier option is crochet cotton that you can find in any big box craft store. So that's another option for you. And when you're making a bracelet, I mean, honestly, you can really use anything that you're weaving your bracelet with. You could use embroidery floss, you can use yarn. I like to use, when I'm doing these bracelets, I like to use sock yarn because you can get a really quick color change. So if I lay this down here, you can see in just about, uh, five inches, you're getting one, two, three, four different colors, which is really cool. So I like to do things like that. This was a situation where I had a sock yarn that I used and it did, um, it wove up really cool because it was a quick, the quick color changes and it was variegated yarn. So I didn't have to change, tie on a new thread each time I wanted to change colors. You can change colors just by using solids and you know, switch them out frequently, but I really prefer variegated when I'm weaving something this small. So, okay, so we're gonna move on to the warping here. Okay, so I have my warp thread here, and what I'm going to do, this is the same process on the big loom and the small one. So what I'm going to do is, there's a couple different methods here. I'm gonna show you two, and then you can pick which one you want. Now, to make a bracelet, you do not need to warp the entire loom. And when I'm making a bracelet, I usually go in a few notches here because I don't need the full width of the loom. So I just have my end piece here and I wrap around all the way around the loom, the back and front. Because what's on the back of your loom is going to become your the, the strings that you use to tie the bracelet onto your wrist. So you definitely want to have that length in the back. And for these, I do five or six strands. So we'll count here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I flip the loom over. And I'm gonna cut this off like that. And if you have a friend nearby, you can have them put their, their finger down. And you can tie a little bow. All right. There we go, thank you very much. Okay, so the loom is warped. And when I make bracelets, I often will warp it so there's two on one. Here's another way you can do it. And I'm sure you can come up with many ways on your own. So uh, definitely don't let this limit you in any way. Here I made a slip knot, the same you would make to if you're gonna crochet. And I'm gonna just put it over one of these notches here. I'm gonna tighten it. Now this, I don't think, I don't like this method as much, but it's another way to do it. So it's it's over the notch, and then I just pulled this strand back through, and I'm just gonna go straight down and around. And then I'm gonna cut this. We need to make another slip knot and have it land about in that same place. And this is the part where it gets a little tricky. Like this is a little bit trickier for kids. 
Uh, I do like to show people options because sometimes people are like, oh, you know, I don't really want to tie it diagonally across the back. Um, so you don't have to. Now the trick is to, to get this tight so you have that tension in the right spot. So this is not the preferred way that I would recommend, but it's another, another way. And like I said, go, feel free to come up with your own methods as well. Okay, so I'm gonna just tighten this in the back. Like so. Okay, so you have that there. And if you're worried about it not staying, you could put a piece of tape across that and have it stay. So those are two ways to warp a loom. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the yarn part of this. So when you select your weaving material, I'm using this sock yarn that has quick color changes, which I like. And what I did over here is I just cut an arm's length of yarn. Okay, and I'll pull this one up here. What I'm going to do is, and again, there's a couple different ways to start weaving. Uh, the easiest way is to make a knot Just like so, and just make, tie a double double knot like that, and then I use a yarn needle, and you can use yarn needles in a couple different sizes. I have on hand. I usually have a couple different needles. The looms come with the smaller ones. Uh, those are pretty easy to to handle. And this one tends to be, for the purpose of this video, I will use the bigger one so you can see what I'm doing. But I use needles and uh, yarn needles in a variety of sizes. The big thing to, to pay attention to is it should be a yarn needle that's not, it has a dull tip. You do not want to try to do this with an embroidery needle or any other sharp needle because it's going to be very, very uncomfortable. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. Well, there's more than two ways, but I'm going to show you this way. So I've knotted it on here, and I'm going to hold this, this other end, and I'm going to weave it in tandem with this edge right here. So if I go under this end warp thread, I'm going to go under that, one, that end piece that I'm holding. So I've just kind of flipped my loom. And I, I'm doing this so you can see. You definitely do, don't have to hold your loom this way if you don't want to. Now, when I weave, uh, I got an, an, a question from uh, someone who had purchased a loom recently. Uh, her daughter was weaving. The ends were pulling in on the sides, the side, edges of the, the bracelet were pulling in. Uh, so what I do when I weave, and all kinds of any type of weaving that I'm doing, I tend to pull my, my yarn across and have it arced. So then I will push it down with the tip of my needle. Okay, and then just tighten this a little bit. But you don't wanna tighten it severely. You don't wanna pull that knot in. Um, it should stay right at the edge. Um, you wanna keep the, try to keep your ends, unless you're doing something design, design wise, you want something to add to your design, you don't wanna be pulling in your edges. So I'm gonna flip this again here so you can, so I'm gonna go back this way. And you do not have to flip your loom back and forth. I tend to move my loom around when I, when I weave. Okay, we're gonna just push this down. Again, it should be loose enough where those warp threads are not pulling in. And again, I'm gonna go around this edge and I'm gonna include both of those pieces. And the idea is that I'm catching that warp thread, which is what I'm using to weave. I'm sorry, we weave with the weft, the weft. This is the weft, these are the warp threads. So I'm holding both strands together on this edge here. And I don't have to weave it completely in. I can um, just hold it for a little bit and then cut it, but you wanna get it in there. I wanna weave that in at least halfway up. So I'd probably have to weave up till here and then I can trim it off. And again, I'm just pushing this down with my needle to kind of pack that in. 
and it's just under over under over like so and as you can see the longer the piece you have the more unwieldy it is when you're first starting to weave okay so again I'm gonna have that loose and I kind of work the center down first and then make sure the ends are good and that's probably your best method to start weaving a bracelet. I'm gonna show you one other option that you can do. And again, there are multiple ways you can do this. This is just two suggestions that I'm gonna give you. You decide which one works for you. Okay, so for this option, again, I'm knotting around the edge thread here. And I'm just going to do a double knot. Like so. Then I'm going to thread my needle. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this short end through the needle first. Because for this technique, what I'm going to do is go under over with this short end. I'm going to pull that through. push it all the way down and then because the, that piece of yarn is so short I'm going to weave the needle through first and then push this through and then I'm going to go back this way pull it through okay I'm going to do that one more time and this is a little bit tricky And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I go around this strand with this short piece. Okay, so this is where the fun starts. you got to get this through your needle. And as you can see, this is a little bit of a struggle. So here's a little, a little cheat for you if you want to make this easier on yourself. I always keep a little my supplies, and I am a multi-crafter. So I have yarn supplies for knitting weaving, crocheting. This is a tiny crochet hook and I'm gonna use this to go through here and hook this yarn. Get my needle out of the way there. Just gonna pull that through. And sometimes you have to do it twice here. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way as I do this just so you can see, but it's kind of a difficult thing here. So, okay, so I'm making sure I hook around that end piece, and then I'm just gonna push this down. Okay, now here's the, the thought on this. You've wove this down, back, and back again, so it's not gonna unravel. There's really no way. And the, the nice thing is, while I still have to hold this piece up here in place and mess with it for you know about an inch or so, an inch and a half of weaving, with this one, I don't have to worry about it. It's, it's in there and it's good. So uh, with this one, you have, you have a little bit of a knot here to deal with, but you know that doesn't bother me, so I'm not too worried about it. There are, are other techniques for starting weaving as you get more advanced, but this, these are a couple that'll just kind of get you started. So then once your end piece is woven in, you just pick up with doing an opposite weave structure. When you're weaving over, under, over, over, under, over, under. You can do also start with o under, over, but you're gonna always be doing the opposite of what you did in the previous row. And then uh, as another little tip, I sell shed sticks kind of separately because it's not required to do these. And when you have a shed stick, um, what you're basically doing is opening up the weaving. So every other pass is, is really quick because you put every other thread up on this, and this is actually a little shuttle. You could use this for weaving on a floor loom, uh, a, a small rigid heddle loom. These are nice for that. Uh, you can't, I mean, it's really cumbersome to try to weave with this going back and forth, but what I'd use these for is just to open up that, that space. So I'll show you how this works. So on this pass, I have to pick up the threads 
individually. And notice that I'm keeping this loose. I'm not pulling it tight because I don't want those edges to pull in. Okay, and on this, on this next pass, I can go right up here by where I've opened the shed and I go right through. So every other pass, it's really quick. And on the, on the, and then in between, I have to pick up the threads individually. But you will speed up your weaving. You'll be twice as fast if you use something. Now, I'm not trying to scam you into buying something for a dollar from me. Uh, if you don't have this, you also could use a toothpick. You could use, this is a little coffee stir. It's like a little tiny mini popsicle stick. It's actually a very thin one from a coffee shop. And I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. I think I'll save that. I saved it and I cut it in half. And you can use it like this or up on its side. And again, it just speeds things along. Use what you have. Um, you, you definitely don't need to purchase special things for this because I think one of the things about weaving is you really need to just make it accessible um, and easy and don't get caught up in spending tons of money on it. Uh, that's bound to happen if you get into it. <laughs> but give yourself a chance to not spend all your money on this hobby. So, okay, that's the basics of getting things going with weaving. Now I'm gonna show you what happens here uh, because I did have a question about what do you do if things start pulling in. Now on this, on this piece here, you can see things are going pretty smooth. Pulls in very slightly right here, kind of keeps going up. And then right in this center part, uh, it's definitely narrower. Now, if you notice it this late in the game, you can unweave it. You could unweave all this and kind of go back and try to make it more uniform. Um, but you can control that just by paying attention as you're weaving. Now, I kept going on purpose doing this because I wanted to show, you know, kind of how things look when you start pulling things, when you pull your weaving tighter. Now, uh, I'm not really bothered by this. Um, some people might be. I uh, also know too that as you, you know, as you, the more weaving you do, the more consistent you're going to be. So, you know, I, I, for effect here, I showed, you know, this is pretty, pretty smooth, pulling in tighter, you're going to get a narrower bracelet. And then if you loosen up again, you can get that, you know, things loosen up. Now you could weave something and go loose and then pull in and then looser to create a design effect. Um, I mean, that's what you can tell people when you first start weaving that it was all in your design. Now, for something like this, this just looks like, you know, someone wasn't paying attention when they were weaving. So, you know, if you're trying to sell your work, you want to definitely try to be consistent. Now, if you're giving it to a friend uh, or loved one, uh, they're probably just going to be appreciative of, you know, your, your weaving and not care so much about that. Um, but there's going to be some variation because I tend to, when I weave these, I don't, I'm usually doing something else at the same time, like watching a show or whatever, driving in the car. Um, it might not have the best lighting. So there's, there's always some variation uh, because I honestly don't want to have it. I, I kind of like that irregularity a little bit. Um, this is pretty, it's pretty consistent though. This one is definitely more noticeable, the difference at the top. But again, uh, you can control that. And the way when people are like, oh, it was pulling in, I don't know what to do. Uh, if, it's, if you notice, you know, you're up here and you notice, wow, this section is really tight and that bothers you, just unweave it and do it again and just, you know, pay attention to what you're doing as you go. Um, and a way to just, the best way is when you're weaving, when you weave through, don't pull drastically. Don't, if you're pulling like that, that's way too hard. Okay, and if you pull that and you're like, wow, that's too tight, what do I do? I just come over here and I just kind of pull it back, loosen it back up. And anytime you're, you know, if you have that arc there, work, push the middle thread down first and then it's gonna stay nice and loose. But not so loose that it's falling apart. This is a pretty tight weave, but it's not, you know, the edges are not pulling in. Because what you should be kind of striving for is having it the same width as when you started. And uh, sometimes that's easier said than done, but, uh, you know, see what see how you do. Give yourself a little time to, um, you know, weave and get the hang of it. Okay, so what we're going to do is once you have, you've made your bracelet, and this is about the length, it's about the same length as this one, so I'm ready to, to take this off. What I'm gonna do here is make um, some knots going across the top. Now, you could just 
weave weave this edge all the you know weave this little piece all the way in and call it good but what I like to do is come in here and I usually turn my loom sideways and I just go around each each thread each of my warp threads and I make a little just kind of loop around now this is not any specific uh, magical thing that I'm doing here I'm just kind of anchoring this down a little bit around each I'm not double knotting it I'm just trying to make a loop here and going through there And I really move my loom around a lot when I'm doing this, so I'm trying to be a little more still than I normally am, and it's kind of making it awkward for me to do these. And when you only have a little piece like that, it's a little tricky because you want to keep it on your needle. Okay, so I've gone all the way across. And here I'm going to make another, I am going to double knot it at the end. And with the knots going across the top, um, and they're not really even full, full-blown knots, but what they do is they're gonna keep the yarn, this weaving from expanding out this way. And then you have a choice. You can um, leave this and catch it up with what you, you know, your ends, your ties, but that's kind of shows. So what I'm going to do is after I get this off the loom, I'm gonna weave it into the back of the weaving and just weave that end in a little bit going down back into the weaving and then I'm gonna cut it off. But first I'm going to flip over and I wanna make sure I cut the right bracelet because one I haven't woven yet. So I'm gonna take this and you just cut, just kind of eyeball the center there and just cut those threads and I'm gonna cut this knot off because I don't need that on there. And I'm gonna flip this back over. So you could pop it right off, but I usually try to be a little more deliberate about this. And I take them off two at a time, which it's not really a big deal because it's not gonna unravel. And then I come in here and I just, holding two at a time, I come in and tie a knot. And I try to move that knot right up to the edge of the weaving and then tighten it. And then I take the next two and do that again. And I'm gonna do that on both ends. And taking your work off the loom can be a little scary because you're afraid it's gonna all come apart, but I haven't really had that happen. Okay, so now we're gonna come back over here. Thread this again. And I'm going to attempt to work this back in here. And what you can do to secure it is you can come back up a little bit further than you started and kind of loop back and work, continue to work it in down a little bit further. I'm not going really far with that because I'm really not that worried about it. Okay, and then you just cut that. 
Now you can't see the end where it is very easily. Now you can just tie your bracelet on like this, or you can come in and braid the ends and just tie a regular braid. And this is usually the way I prefer to finish these off. And if you want to have a little tension on these, you could use a clipboard and clip one end and then braid. And with the loom, the, the size that it is, it leaves you enough, enough extra yarn to tie things on or to tie it onto your wrist. You also could sew your weaving down to a piece of leather or a piece of fabric and attach a snap and have a weave of a bracelet that is, you know, snaps on and off. I don't like to put snaps right onto my weaving because the pulling on and off, like undoing that fastening and unfastening the snap sometimes ruins the weave structure. So if I'm going to put a snap on there, I usually incorporate some kind of backing fabric that's secure. And I weave, or I, I, I braid these, I braid these as far as I can down to the edge here. And that's gonna be plenty. And then what I do is come in and tie a knot right on the edge of the braid there. So you work that knot all the way down. And then you can just even that up. And then we do the same on the other side. Okay, and there we have our bracelet. And so you can tie that on yourself and wear it or go ahead and give that to a friend. They're really fun and easy to make, especially for kids who are just getting a start at weaving. If you have any questions, you can email me at jennifer at craftsanity.com. Happy weaving. Mm -hmm.